then. I'll already be surprised by Freeze's reaction time. Okay, I don't think we've got any no. of uh, Twitch. Is that is that true? Uh, we now have audio. Yeah, I had that muted. Uh, I have sure. stuff on different channels. No worries. Okay, well, I'll I'll, I'll just start from uh, quick from the beginning. So we've got a quick here. We've got a. Oh, oh yeah. Get myself backwards. Okay. Okay. I'm not very good at words. Um. Okay, so this is a like rough distribution of reaction times taken from Human Benchmark. Um, as you can see, most player, most people who use Human Benchmark at least sort of bunch between 150 milliseconds and 300 milliseconds, and that has about 95% of all people who take the, the reaction test. Um, the slower ones will often be like there's people who take them on mo mobile phones, and that skews it, skews results as well. And so here we've got some players. Um, and this is probably more accurate to what you'd expect for like the raw reaction times of players playing the game. You've got your slow slow pokes like me at the lower end of the average, um, and then uh, like most people will be clustered around 200 milliseconds. So Freeze has got 180. Um, a lot of our, like this is like this is about the slowest that comp players have. About 200. There's not many comp players who have slower than 200 milliseconds reactions. Um, and then over at this end, we've got like the very fastest um, competitive players, players like, well, Clutch has got about 140, 150, according to the, the very fastest. I've got a little app here. Blitz, who's in the chat at the moment with us, has 130 you get, don't you, Blitz? Yeah. Yeah, 130. So there's, there's the arrow for 130. So really very, very fast. But nobody has anything faster than like 120 would be like the like the your the best reaction possible is about 120 like some people might be able to react even faster on occasion but there's no way you're going to be doing that consistently so consistently like this is about the limit and then i've got here a little there we go so 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 we don't have this um so we don't have this whole um big graph i'm going to turn the graph off now but we'll leave the um, the little sort of average. This is like the the region we're looking at for sim single stimulus reaction speed. So this is measured measured at via human benchmark, the kind of thing. As you see one button, see one input, press a button. So very simple, no thought required or anything. But as we all know, reacting is a lot more complicated than that, and there are a lot of things that go into reaction. So that's the first thing we're gonna, gonna talk about now is what goes into reacting to an attack. So you're not just pressing a button on response to a red, to something green going red, for example. Red going green. Right. So this is the here we've got here the uh, the anatomy of a reaction window essentially. So first thing that happens is you get your game receives a signal from the internet. And then oh I've not sorted this out. I'm being so all right, I've been really done with this, but let me just duplicate that. Take this. Right, so the first thing happens, your game gets a signal from the internet, which uh, goes to your game here. Great. I definitely found this out. Your game then uh, decides, shows it's going to have an attack. It shows an indicator for you to dis to it like tells that there's going to be an indicator for the attack, which goes to your screen. You then have to see that indicator. Once you've seen the indicator, you have to decide what you're going to do about the indicator. Then you have to send a message from your brain to your finger to press a button. That needs to get then goes to the controller. Pump. No, that's right. If you've got any questions, you can interrupt me anytime. It's fine. Um, it goes your. You then have to send a signal from your brain to do the input, which goes to the computer again, and then finally you parry the attack. If that's it, if that's what you were, you were inputting, you, know, you either parry or fail. But as you can see, there are lots of steps along the way to making a reaction, all of which can add their own delays. So this whole process here needs to happen before you go from having an attack arrive at your computer to you parrying an attack. So we've got lots of different steps that can add up 
and add reactions. So we're gonna next we will break down these steps and which and roughly the kind of delays your you can expect. So the reaction times itself like are really this bit here. So this is what we would call a reaction time, essentially. You know, it's what you see, you see, your brain, you respond. But there's a lot of extra stuff on the top and on the bottom that goes into making a reaction actually happen. So turn this bit off now. Boop. Next bit delays. Okay, so we oh actually no, off this open again. As you can see, we can break this down into two categories. Essentially, you've got external delays, which happen um in between the game, your your reaction here and the game doing something. So it's here we've got like input delay here and it deciding to do a parry, parry. Here we've got the display delay. And then in between, you've got when the game decides to actually do something. So if I were to draw again, external delays would be stuff like this bit, um, this bit, and this bit. These are external delays. They are like not part of the game. They're not things that the developers have programmed in, but they are things that are that as well thought about. And yeah, okay. And then we've got your internal in-game delays, essentially, which are here and here. These are things that the developers have decided to put in the game to make things slower, essentially, or to add extra delays intentionally. So now we'll get rid of this, and then we'll start to break it down. All right. So we've got our external delays and internal delays. We'll start off with the external ones, because these are the ones. Uh, actually, no, let's start off with, in, let's start off with internal delays, um, the, the in-game del no, I wish you no, no. Externals on top, so we'll go with that one instead. All right. So here we've got our internal delays, uh, external delays. Oh man, I'm terrible at this. Aren't I? Okay. So the first at the bottom here, we've got your single stimulus reaction speed. So this is again stuff that's part of the game, not part of the game itself. Your single stimulus reaction speed is going to it's going to be around here. Um, we've got it's actually quite a big range from the very fastest to the slowest. They're probably about 150 milliseconds variability between between like the the the, the average of people um so this is already and we'll get back to this at the end of the, of the talk essentially but but this is probably what i want to get at in terms of this range here is quite big so when we're saying is an attack reactable is an attack unreactable we're having to like pin it unreactable would be on this side of the the range and reactable will be on this side of the range but there's a very big range where it can fall an uh, attack or move, move or a mix up can fall in the middle um of the reactable range and then it's unreactable to some people and reactable to other people so we'll talk a little bit about that later on as to which ones um are like which mix ups and so on are like react fully reactable or slightly reactable so uh, if we talk about your um, single stimulus reaction time which is not a particularly interesting um, measure. It's just you, know, you can't improve this dramatically. You can improve it by, you know, getting lots of sleep, um, being healthy in general. Um, caffeine helps your reaction speed. You know, people will sell you things like gamer supplements, which are all touted to increase your reaction speed and. Some of them may do. I don't know. I've not tried them myself. And not very many of them are actually clinically reviewed to help. Things that, but there's lots of stuff that we know makes it makes it worse. So if you're you're stressed out, that can actually reduce your reaction speed. Um, various different things, you know, state, state of emotional distress. So this is why people say try and remain calm when you're playing a game, because um, if you're stressed out, you might end up reacting slower. So. The next thing above that, we have frame rates. So this, despite everybody talked about frame rate as a major factor for reaction speed, but actually on the grand scheme of things, it's really not that big of a um, 
today. If you look at your your single stimulus reaction speed, which is you know from here to anywhere in this region, even at 30 frames a second, the frame rate is only adding a very small portion of that delay. If you're at six, uh, 60 frames a second, it's 16, you know, just about 17 milliseconds, at 144 frames a second or hertz, you're at seven milliseconds essentially of delay, which is almost nothing really in the grand scheme of things. It can make the difference between you parrying an attack or not parrying an attack. And also frame rates being higher make things look smoother. So they give you more time more time to read animations but in the grand scheme of things frame rate is not the biggest impactor of um reaction speed and i think that's one of the things i'd like to people to go away with today if you are stressing out about your setup going from 90 frames a second to 80 frames a second or like you're worried that turning on something from like uh turning on a setting will I saw, I saw somebody saw a post, a post recently asking about they were up in they got a new monitor that's 2k instead of 180p and it went from 144 frames a second to 90 frames a second and they were worried about would that be worse you know like yes it's going to make an impact on your reaction speed but it's going to be a, a vanishingly small one in the grand scheme of things because as we'll come on to later there's lots of other factors that get in the way so yes you can make your game look worse if you want to eke out that tiny bit of performance but a lot of the time, what you will f notice will be in your head rather than an actual dramatic improvement because the margins we're looking at are very small. Right, the next thing, setup. So compared to the frame rate, your setup makes, on the, this is your screen setup, makes a much bigger difference. If you're running your, your game on a monitor, on like a high-end monitor, you're going to be adding one to 10 milliseconds of display delay. Um, it's a bit difficult to say when, this is, this is on top of your frame rate, by the way. So this is the rate they update and this is how long they take to do each update essentially. But if you're playing on a monitor, you can expect one to 10 milliseconds of delay. If you're playing on an old plasma TV with no game setting on it, you can have up to 150 milliseconds of delay. So this can be doubling your reaction speed essentially. If you've got, if you're someone like Clutch with 150 ms reaction speed, goes, I guess, goes from zero to here. That's basically doubling your action time just from having a bad TV. Um, so set your TVs to game mode if you're playing on console or on a TV. Um, if you've got some new TVs, do have kind of quite low low refresh rate, um, low latency. I think they call it pixel display latency or pixel pixel change speed or something along those lines. Um, and they they are close to monitors, but in general, you want to be using a uh, standard computer monitors is normally the best choice. Um, uh, yeah, and typically you'd also have to enable a gaming mode for that, which would make the visual appearance of your TV look a bit worse uh, for that faster uh, ref uh, not refresh, but greater gray response time. Yeah. Okay. So greater greater gray. That's the yeah. So yeah. basically, it's how long it takes a pixel to turn on and then turn off again and go back to being a neutral yeah. because i think that's partly why these plasma tvs have um such a long response time is because they light up quite quickly but then they take a long time to fade back down to black so it can make a difference if you're reacting to like a, a bright thing on screen or if you're reacting to um a like dark thing but yeah in general game mode or a monitor for your for your tv Right, the next thing, which is the thing that causes like people to complain about the most, but actually on the grand scheme of things also isn't huge. It, it contributes to the frame rate, but the next thing is platform. So this is um this is in this delay here that I've, I've mentioned, which is about 70 milliseconds for old gen consoles and 30 milliseconds roughly for PC next gen. This is a very hard exact number to pin down and it doesn't include the frame rate so this if you're playing on a pc at 30 frames a second you'll be having total about uh with luck and mortar let's say that adds 10 you're going to be having total 60 70 70 milliseconds of, of overall lag if you're playing on an old gen console at 30 then it's going to be close to 100 
milliseconds you're playing on a TV, add an extra 50 to that, you end up with 150 milliseconds total delay, which is about right from when we've done like testing. But there's a lot that goes into these little time windows. Um, it's about how fast your 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 platform, the PC or the console can accept inputs from the controller. It's in the game itself, how long the game takes to process the um, process the, the signals from these things um, and how long it then before it sends out an image to the screen. So partly why old gen consoles have such a bad delay is they are forced V-Sync enabled. So V-Sync essentially delays how long you how long um, the program waits to send a send a frame to the, the screen to prevent screen tearing. It doesn't want it doesn't want to send it waits to send the whole frame all at once rather than sending half a frame and then the half frame later, which ends up the screen tearing. Sorry about <laughs> I've got a bit of cold going on. So um con consoles are or at least the old gen consoles have forced triple buffer VSync. Um, which adds a significant amount of delay. And you can see that even if they were to take old consoles, which are running at 33, um, you know, 30 hertz, and manage, somehow manage, magically manage to get an extra, like double the performance, and manage to get 60 frames per second out of these old consoles, they still wouldn't be touching this delay here. So it'd be going down from here to here, and really not making a big difference in terms of the overall platform specific delay. So I guess the, the message here is um, just improving the frame rate won't help that much on old gens. Uh, get a new gen if you can and you want to. Um, it's a, It kind of sucks that you are stuck against playing against the next gen consoles when you're on an old gen console. I know a lot of people complain about it. But if you look at the difference here in terms of delay, you, again, we can add on these frames things. So, you know, an uh, a next gen console running at sixty frames a second on a decent monitor will have like fifty frame, fifty milliseconds of input delay, roughly, maybe a little bit more. An old gen one will have a hundred milliseconds. So you're looking at a fifty millisecond difference in input delay. But then go back to our single stimulus reaction speeds. That is half the difference between Clutch Meister's reactions and my reaction time. And we're playing on the same platform already. So whilst it is unfair, it's no more unfair than just being born with worse genetics or being older or being ill or other things that can cause your reaction speed to be worse. So like, I don't know, I'm not sure if that's necessarily helpful in terms of, um, but you know, that's something to think about maybe. The next thing, I put the brain up here. This is the most important thing. Choices. So we've talked about single stimulus reaction times. But as we know in Frana, you can be attacked from multiple different directions at once. And this is by far and away the biggest cause of delays other than having a terrible TV that don't exist within the game. It's on how well you react to multiple different things. Essentially, when you add an extra option to each, to a, to a reaction, it adds a minimum of 50 milliseconds, roughly, people. So, so you can't really improve much beyond this, but we're talking a minimum here. If you don't know that you're having to make a choice, this can go up dramatically. So this is the same reason why you hand a controller to someone who's never played the game, they won't be able to block anything because they've never, they don't know what to expect. They're not practiced at all. This time to think about it, we're going to call it choices, but it can also just be called thinking, goes up dramatically if you haven't had practice. So this is what you can do, improve the most on yourself is by training, by learning the game, by thinking about what your opponent's going to do. You can reduce the time it takes you to make these multiple choice decisions. And you can also move from having a, something, a reaction as a, as a multiple choice reaction to having it be a single choice reaction. 
and we'll come back to that later. But if you can make a prediction that your opponent's going to do uh, one particular move, and then you are waiting for that move, that one move, you can react to that one move a lot easier because you've essentially gotten rid of the thinking time. You've you've set you've done like what's called a soft read that you've expecting a single thing, and therefore your reaction time to that will be much closer to your single stimulus reaction time. And when it comes to players being able to react to things nowadays, even after the CCU they couldn't react to beforehand a lot of that comes down to players learning and practicing and turning multiple choice reactions into single stimulus reactions by learning what they can avoid beforehand um if that makes any sense like if you have any questions or anything just um not make any sense just throw out some <coughs> questions in the chats or you know interrupt me just and I'm just talking myself otherwise, um, which is fine. Okay. So yeah, this is the most important thing in terms of external delays that don't exist within the game. Right. Next thing, in-game delays. Now these are the game the delays that the game has intentionally pro they've intentionally been programmed into the game to change your. Um, Oh, somebody mentioned uh, about how to measure your reactions. You can use a website called Human Benchmark Reaction Time Measurement thing. You just Google that. Um, lots of people use that. And that's for measuring your... It can measure your single stimulus reaction speeds. It's got lots of other things you can measure on there as well, like your ability to remember, short-term yep. memory. I'll post uh, that through the chat, the uh, reaction time one. Yeah. And you can post... And it can do things like uh, measuring your typing speed and stuff like that. So it does lots of cool little tests. Um, something to remember is that they do take into account it's not just your single stimulus reaction I think that these tests will be taking into account thing, things like your platform your setup and the frame rate you are running at so if you do if you try and do single stimulus reaction test on your phone you will get a massively worse um, time than if you do it on a PC because phone screens with touch capacitors have much lower um mm -hmm input control rates type things to um oops, 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 versus versus uh like pcs and, and a mouse because touch screens are slower um all that kind of stuff so some... all right so external delays finish that Go, we'll move on to the in-game delays. These are like these are things which the game designers have put in intentionally to stop you being able to react to everything perfectly. Um, here we go. I've got some examples. First one is going to be we'll go from the top down this time because um, this is going in kind of order uh, that way. All right. First thing, indicators, and this is something that the CCU has changed. Um, and a lot of people complain about, it used to be between 66 milliseconds or zero milliseconds, depending on the delay window. Nowadays, every indicator that the game shows you is delayed by 100 milliseconds, regardless of how how the opponent input this thing. They're all going to be delayed 100 milliseconds. So if you have a 500 millisecond attack, it's going to indicator is going to come out, at four, it's going to be a 400 millisecond indicator, essentially. So you have to take off 100 milliseconds from every attack indicator. And this also applies to seeing your opponent's guard changes, seeing um, their stamina change, pretty much everything in the game. Animations as well as indicators. Sorry, I should really put that. Um, and it is, and animations. Well, you know what? I'm not going to change it because it'll look nasty, but I'll, do it. I'll change it later. Um, Indicators and animations. Everything that you see on the screen is delayed by 100 milliseconds thanks to lag compensation. And this also means that uh, the reason we call it lag compensation is if your opponent has, uh, if you your opponent have less than 100 milliseconds of combined latency, that is eaten up essentially by this lag compensation. So I could be playing with somebody 
who has, if let's say, let's say I have, I have 20 ping and they have 80 ping, in total that's 100 MS of latency, but our reaction, our, our indicators and animations will look the same as they would if I had 10 and then my opponent also had 10. So this, whilst this um, does hide what your opponent is doing for a little bit of time, it also means it's much more consistent. If you didn't have this lag compensation, and this is what kind of delay-based um, uh, lag code, net code used to do, attacks would change speed depending on how fast um, the connection between you and your opponent is all the time. So this essentially allows you to play with anybody who's got 100 MS latency and not notice any difference. Um, next thing, so that's just regular attacks. We also have bash attacks have a slight fade in to their indicator. So the bash indicator that appears on a player, um, and I think we can find there's three who've done some videos. Um, sorry, and and, not, and lol, we'll we'll talk about how this all comes together in an actual game of you know, Dominion a little bit later. But so if you're asking about how the latency works with um, Dominion, when it, when you see a scoreboard that says the latency, that essentially you need to add your number to your opponent's number. And if that number is less than 100 or 10, slightly different, less than 133, you won't have attacks become any faster. So, um, oh yeah, this is nice. Nutella is showing some pictures in Dojo voice chat of the fade in for the bash indicator. So bash indicators, whilst attack indicators appear and they're red instantly as soon as the attack starts, the bash indicator takes about two frames at 30 frames per second to fade in. So you can see it does it does show at um, exactly 100 MS, but it's very faint. And it's only it's only going to be at the full orange glow when. Oh, yes, yeah, so no, uh, no, it's not all player, players yet. It's just a, any two players because somebody can be playing in the same lobby with much worse latency and they won't ruin the lobby for everybody else, at least in theory. Um, so yes, essentially, whilst most attacks have indicators that are delayed 100 ms, bashes have attack indicators that are delayed essentially by 166 ms. So they are harder to um, see the bash indicators. And this is why animations in particular play a much more important role in reacting to bashes than reacting to um, regular attacks, or at least, at least that's what players who have good reactions tell me. And subtle re subtle animations for slower bashes, like Gladiator's Zone, for example. Gladiator's Zone is a 600 MS bash, but because it has a subtle animation and the bash indicator takes some time to fade in, it's not as reactable as you would expect given the actual speed of the bash. So when you're looking at bashes and they and you see a speed of them, this is something to bear in mind that actually the animation starts earlier than the indicator does, and you will, um, and that has more of, a, more of an impact on reacting than just the raw speed. At least it's an extent. Just to also note, Nusha Trap doesn't have this uh, fade in, so you can yeah. see uh, the orange instantly. Uh, well, after 100 ms slide comp, but instantly once. The animation's actually visible. And it's the same for unblockable uh, attacks, just like yep. unblockable heavies and stuff. There's, I don't think there's any fade in for that either. Yeah, it's, it's just, just fade in for bashes purely. Just for bashes. Um, um, and there's no fade in for guard breaks. It's, it's only bashes that seem to have this fade in, and I don't know why. Um, I'm not I'm not saying that uh, it should be gotten rid of, um, but it is, it is strange that there's an inconsistency there. Um, but presumably it's intentional because you can't have a fade in without it being intentional. So, um, yeah. Probably a relic next of all thing. times. <laughs> yeah. The next thing. Um, so, you add, so as we go down this, th these things you'll add together, essentially, like on the same with the other side as well, you have to add all of these things together to get your overall reaction window, essentially. And so for a bash, it's 100 MS plus 67 MS um, for the fade in, uh, sort of. Depending on animation, and the same thing applies for this next one: guard switching. So, I think most people know that guard switch takes another hundred milliseconds on top of your indication uh, indicator. It's going to take an extra hundred MS for you to switch your guard. 
So that's that is intentional because otherwise you'd be able to spin your guard around like super fast and be able to block everything all at once. Um, but yeah, it does show that people who like if you if you're spinning your guard around very fast, essentially what you're doing is making you have no guard at all because every time your guard is about to come up, it will go down straight away again. So whilst your guard takes a hundred meter switch, it will also like you're not going to be having extra guard by spinning it. Um, so. Bear, bear that in mind. And this means for regular attacks, to block a 500 MS light attack, you're going to need 100 MS for lag compensation, 400 MS window, another 100 MS for switcher guard, 300 MS window. So, we're already seeing that just from... Well, Foolish Fox, you're, you're getting ahead of me. <laughs> there. We'll, we're going to parry in a second. Um, that's just down here. Um, so, as well as the... Um, yeah, as well as the lag compensation, you've got the... 100 MS of guard switch time, and we can see we're already getting down too close to the single stimulus reaction speed for some people. So if you're playing on a, a slower platform and you've got a bad monitor, 500 MS light attacks, and you've got slow reaction speed, 500 MS light attacks may well be within your single stimulus reaction time. So which means if you have to make a choice between three of them, that adds an extra an extra bit of time, you just won't be able to do that. Um, so yeah, that that does. This is what we mean when we talk about. Um, I don't, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself again, but we're seeing that things are starting to get into this single stimulus speed just from these these delays that you expect. Um, the next thing, attacks. Attacks all have an extra 33 milliseconds of startup. Sometimes this is a this is from this is technically it's from neutral. Um, and it's on top of your guard switch chain. So if you want to switch guard and then press attack, I think sometimes it's eaten up by this 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 delay. Other times it's not. But essentially, from neutral, your attacks are going to be taking an extra thirty three ms to happen. Um, and that means that when you're looking at your, you can add this number to lag compensation when you're looking at the total latency between players, which is why I said a little bit earlier, if you've got a total combined latency of 133 milliseconds, your attacks won't be any faster, although it won't appear faster. And that's because the offensive action delay of 33 milliseconds, or one frame, is going to be preventing, it's going to be delaying those a little bit extra. So it's going to be eating up your, your overall latency within these two delays. Um, and that's important for... This in terms of this is also important in terms of reacting to things with an attack. So let's say you see an attack and you want to interrupt it. Well, not only have you got your normal indicator fading, you've also got an extra 33 ms of offensive um, startup before you can before your reaction will happen essentially. So that's quite important to remember. Defensive actions like dodging, parrying, switching a guard, don't have this extra 33 milliseconds of delay. But offensive actions, and that includes, I think it also includes special stances, because those count as attacks. At least they, they, they run off attack recovery. So this might be a reason why it's harder to do um, dodge certain things using um, hidden stance, even though the startup of the iframes on that might be, might not, might be the same as a dodge. Um, right. That's this is kind of like a bit of a, a murky subject. So whilst I've put like this uh, diagrams all nice and clean, there are questions about some of these, in particular how they interact with each other. And attack startup and this offensive delay is the biggest one, I would say, on this side of the of the um, diagram that we aren't one hundred percent sure. And the reason for that is because you can't see this very easily whereas you can you can measure this and you know you, how long it takes your guard switch in game very easily by seeing that attacks from the opponents have sped up but you can't see if they've pressed the button and it's taken extra time for that button to cause an action um without measuring directly the button press so this is complicated essentially um uh, you can't. I oh, sorry. I forget that I'm not on on camera. You can't see me shrugging, but I'm shrugging right now. Um, add a 33 ms if you're re if you're reacting with an attack. Next thing, parrying. 
Parrying also has 100 MS startup, but it ignores guard switch delay. So the reaction to block something and the reaction to parry something, the window is the same all the time. That means that you, if you can block something on reaction, theoretically, you can parry the thing on reaction as well. It's slightly more complicated because if you remember, we had um, you, how long it takes you to press the button in between your brain and the and the and the input of the game. Yeah. Parrying is a more complicated input. You have to move your guard and press a button, so it's a little bit harder, and that slows things down. People also have to commit to a bit more, a bit more, so that also slows down the reactions, which is why in practice, parrying is harder than blocking. But in theory. It's the same window. Um, this is because every attack has a window where it's parable, and that window ends. It starts 300 ms before the attack hits you, and it ends 100 ms before the attack hits you. So even though you have no guard switch delay, you can't parry the last 100 ms of an attack. So that's why it's 100 ms as well. Next thing, deflecting. Deflects also have 100 ms of startup. Um, these do take. This does add into guard switch delay. So if you switch your guard, it's going to delay you doing another action. You can't cancel a guard switch with a dodge. So if you switch guard and then try and deflect something, that's going to take longer than if you um, just deflect it. And that this guard switch, uh, I guess I forgot to mention that, with crushing counters as well, superior blocks. If you switch your guard to do an attack, that's going to have an extra 100 ms of delay versus if you switch your guard to parry, because that ignores the guard switch delay. So apart from parry startup, the rest of these, you've got to include the guard switch delay with all of your uh, think, thinking. Right, next one, dodging. So here, this is a nice little um, side note here. This is why side deflects are harder than top forward deflects. But essentially, dodges have, in between you pressing the button for dodging and your iframes or your dodge starting, there is 167 milliseconds or 166 milliseconds of delay. And this window here in between the deflect startup and the iframe startup is the deflect window on side dodges because for some reason iframes override deflect frames. So even if you start up a deflect and you should have 200 milliseconds of active time, from, so from here to here, well, you're actually not only going to get from here to here because afterwards you have iframes from this point until 300 minutes into your dodge. So this is why side deflects are harder than top deflects. And the last one of the in-game ones is, this is a specific one because there are specific tools as well. Bulwark counter has a 200 MS startup minimum because you have 100 MS going into the stance and then 100 MS of you pressing over bulwark. Start so this is why it is easier to dodge a bash than it is to bulwark counter a bash, because you have a little bit of extra time between the two. Also, because the input's slightly harder. Again, same as parrying, you have to press two buttons for bulwark counter and one button for dodge. So um, there are other in-game delays for defensive actions that I've not included here. Things like going to full block, crushing counters on attacks, normally have a 100 ms startup in addition to the guard switch time. Um, and I think the offensive action time gets eaten up in that, but it's a bit confusing. So that's why it's harder to crush encounter a light attack than it is to block a light attack or parry. All right. So does anybody have any questions about the like the sources of delays of these um, these things? What was I like? super sorry. Just check the chat some questions. Nope. Okay. That's good. Um, right. I, uh, by the way, these, these diagrams, I will be making a post on the competitive subreddit with them later, but I'll also put them in um, the dojo chat so you can so you can see them if you if you want to sort of inspect them later on at your at your leisure. Um, but we'll move on to the next bit, which is rid of these. All right. Um, so we talked about the delays and things. I I'll, I might open them up again later, but we'll probably refer to them in memory. Next thing we're going to look at is mix-ups. Okay. So 
Nope. All right. Got myself an arrow here. This is going to be, uh, I've not put these on the timeline yet because, uh, well, I haven't. <laughs> but we're going to start off with light attacks first. So, light attack. So, 500 MS light attack. What is the reaction when Nopa 500 MS light attack? Well, you have 100 MS guard switch delay. And so the attack starts here. You've got 100 MS of indicator delay and 100 MS of guard switch delay. So for a 500 MS attack, this is where the reaction window is at 300 MS. Um, we... There we go. All right. So this should be reactable for most people. If you're playing on a PC, if you're playing, if you've got good reaction speeds, not like me. Let's do this here again. 500 MS light attack should be within the region of most people for similar stimulus. If you've got, you have three directions to choose from, that's if you're playing a static guard hero, that's actually only really two extra choices because you have to switch your guard in two different directions. So let's say you're at um, your average speed here. Uh, you can add an extra 50, 50 MS onto it, roughly. It's going to be reactable most of the time um, if you're focused. If you're not focused or if you're looking for something else, a uh, final light attack can hit most players. And even the faster players like Blitz will get hit by light attack sometimes if they are focusing on something else. Um, he'll parry most of them, but if Blitz tells you he never gets hit by a light attacks, he's lying because I've seen him get hit by them. <laughs> Next up, well, 400 MS light attack is going to be, unsurprisingly, 100 MS faster. And this is getting into the realms of unreactable for most players most of the time. Especially if you have to pick a direction. So from a... If it's only one direction, this is actually within single stimulus time for, most, for many players. So if you are looking at... Let's say you've dodged a Tiandi's um, forward dodge, uh, his, his, his neutral bash, and you are... Um, he's going to do a light attack and you want to parry that, you might be able to see that that light attack indicator and parry it on reaction to it. So you won't parry if he if he doesn't. But for some people, you won't be able to. So, yeah. For an MS, single direction, that's doable. Add three directions for it, that moves it beyond the realm of reactability, essentially. It moves in this direction, an extra... Oh, yeah, that's what I'm getting to. So, yeah, this one, let's say you move this one to, to 100 MS slower, because you have to react to two directions. That's still within your reaction speed window, essentially. Move this one down 100 MS, that's unreactable for most people. And Blitz will correct me if I am um, wrong, but most players cannot, even the very fastest, struggle to react to 400 MS tri-directional light attacks. And it's why things like Stor um, Raider's Storming Tap, PK's Dagger Cancel, Shaman's Dagger Cancel, and um, Zerka's Faint Lights, and things like <laughs> Aramusha's Deadly Faints. For me, it depends, because like, uh, Zerk Faint Lights are very easy. They're, like, they're not really even that hard. But like Aramusha's uh, deadly faints are very hard. Yeah, so, like, I think it's just the window like it gives you to think about it because Zerk has to like faint as heavy while Aramusha kind of soft faints into it. Yeah, so that yeah that, that obviously is a big um a big uh. In fact, sorry, you asked about Nabushi's stance lights. So Nabushi's stance lights are technically five hundred ms. They have hidden indicators for an extra four hundred ms, but the animation is the same. So. They're kind of in between these, essentially. If you're going off the indicator only, it's going to be quite hard to react to. But if you're looking at the animation, and they have quite distinctive animations because of um, how she moves with her spear, they're going to be closer to reactable. So 
you will hit people with them more than if you were using um than if you were using her regular lights but because i mean this also goes back into terms of what blitz said how berserker faint lights for him are easier because you have the faint which is a big tell that there's going to be a light coming and so he has and that's about you then focus on the reaction and you can reduce your thinking time which is is the most flexible part of the whole equation as it were for, for reaction speed and make it easier to react to so this is again when you've got like if i i could put um i've lost my train of thought really but yeah this can be in either direction essentially um it can be i'm, I'm just i'm just i'm just sit there. yeah nabushis are harder but not in, not unreactable for most players um, next thing we have here faints so a faint happens 400 ms before an attack hits you but it doesn't have uh, and it also has the 100 ms of um input delay so i guess we can go from the 300 ms so 400 ms is when it is when it would stuff up i'm not getting myself confused um by the way uh i've just picked a, a feather for light and heavy for a brick a brick for heavy i hope that makes sense no um, yeah. so faints happen for us before the attack happens then you have 100 ms of indicator the hidden indicator and then you have parrying if you're going to do the, the parry input as well so in general reacting to a faint is going to be about the same window as reacting to a 400 ms light attack but it's only in one direction so this is the difference between multi-stimulus and, and single stimulus reaction times is that reacting to a feint is doable for much more players than it is blocking a 400 ms uh like omnidirectional light because it's only one reaction you have to deter you but you're also reacting a lot more to the animation than the indicator so so it's it's variable but essentially reacting to which people call this people call this reacting to parry flash even though we've done some tests and it seems to be actually that the animation is more of an in, more of a factor than um than the than the indicator itself but in theory it's doable for a lot of players so and you'll see that like totem tote mind on stream yesterday they were showing off some, some training he'd been doing against Shigoki's neutral top heavy or his chain top heavy unblockable and he has 180 ms reactions and he was react very consistently so this is partly about moving your reaction to a single stimulus reaction because if it's single stimulus you're going to be able to react to it a lot more than if it's a multi-stimulus reaction pushes it this direction so faints are pretty much always hitting around here whereas lights have more likely to have other things going on that push them in this direction next up bashes well start off with a six and less bash instead of a five less bash Single MS bash. We have a 100 MS delay on the indicator. Then we have uh, animation. And then there's roughly 60 MS delay for the indicator to come in. And then dodging is an extra 166 MS. So about here. About the same as a 5 MS light, dodging a 600 MS bash. Um, it depends on how much the indicator fades in and how much the uh, sorry how much the how distinct the animation is. But for most players, 600 ms bash 
should be about the same as a 500 meter light in terms of your ability to react to it. Of course, when you are looking out for a, a, a bash at the same time as trying to watch lights for lights, then it becomes a lot harder because you're then, even though it's well above your single stimulus reaction time, if you add in three directions of lights and a direction of a bash, that's adding an extra 50 milliseconds each time, roughly, or whatever. And then you are pushing it all the way down here. So uh, Just Ice asks about delaying feints. Basically, since the so since the CCU faint always appear hundred as if you delay them hundred ms anyway. So in theory, it shouldn't make them any faster. And if you have a very good connection, delaying your faint won't make a difference. But if you've got a little bit of latency, then delaying a faint can push that into having an impact. I think that's why it makes a little bit of difference. But I personally don't, I, I, look, what my my reactions are, I don't know about if a delayed faint is hard to react to or not. In theory, they should be the same. In practice, latency comes into it a little bit and it becomes a lot harder. So we've talked about 600 ms bashes. What about the next ones? 500 ms bashes. Well, they're going to be 100 ms faster. Here we are again, sitting at the 200 ms window. Oops. Next step. Except, so why are so 500 ms bash? In theory, it's going to be the same speed as a full rest light but bashes are much so if you were reacting to a final bash and full rest lights all at the same time that would be pretty much unreactable for everybody but essentially if it, you're just looking for the bash it's within single stimulus reaction time for many fast players and this is why attacks like centurion's kick or jj's kick or kyoshin's kick don't necessarily function very well at high levels because they don't have any extra aspects to them that are pushing them in the direction of i'm going to move, actually you know i'm going to move 400 ms lights this way because we've talked because there's three of them let's just say we talk omnidirectional ones that's going to be adding extra extra stuff so i'm going to put it right at the end of the reactable that some players can react to them sometimes so even though, in theory, the, the like if you're looking only at one of them, the reaction for a bash is about the same. Because, oh, I'm losing myself. I'm losing myself. I'm really sorry about this. It's been a while since I've done this, and I'm kind of sick as well. So, if your bash is a single stimulus, it's going to be reactable. If it's part of a multi stimulus. Is going to be unreactable essentially, and that's why I've got here our bash and undodgeable mix up. Well, when you're looking at bash and undodgeable, you've got to not only look out for the bash, you've got to think about the undodgeable attack as well. So, for most players, that ends up being two things and therefore pushes this in the direction of being unreactable. But for if you if you are capable of reacting to a 500 s indicator bash on its own and also that's fast enough that gives you time to then make a choice react to a 500 s light they can be not effective so for the very very fastest players like blitz and antonio clutch maybe some of these bash undodgeable mix-ups are not unreactable so they are able to react to things especially if the undodgeable is a lot slower than the bash because then you can wait and do a single stimulus reaction to the bash and then if you haven't reacted to the bash well you can just block the 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 dodge tap the undodgeable later on so things like um key stance for example has got a very distinctive animation on the kick and the undodgeables are much slower you can if you're a fast enough player you can react single stimulus to the the kick and then just block the unvoidables if you haven't already dodged the kick. Um, 
Would you say that's about right, Blitz? Yeah. So which one? Uh, also comes into like play with how jittery the heavies are. Like for instance, uh, Griffin's undodgeable light versus kick. His undodgeable light feels like a really jittery. So the animation kind of looks very similar to the past. So that catches a lot of people. But like BP's uh, 500 ms chain bash versus his uh, undodgeable is it, it isn't really that bad. Oh, Alex, your bird as well, by the way. Uh, Looks has got a parrot. That's what's um, yellow in the background. Uh, but yeah, Megala says feels bad, man. He does feel bad. But essentially, this is quite a big factor in terms of in terms of the viability of of bash undodgeable mix ups. They are being pushed this direction um, by having multiple things to think about, and how hard those things are to think about really impacts whether they are like you know here or if they're over here. Um, on topic of bashes, 400 ms bashes, they exist, so we probably should mention them. Well, they're going to be 100 ms faster. We've, um, 600, uh, yeah, let, uh, let's, let's pretend you can react to them as soon as the, sorry, I really should put, it's not entirely accurate, because if you can react to them as soon as the indicator fades in, you're actually, it's actually 33 ms faster, so, uh, stick it here instead. So it's a bit it's a bit wobbly because of the the fade in, but let's say you, if you're able to react to the animation instantly, it's actually slightly easier to um, dot. This is so this is what makes them like harder or easier than than lights. Essentially, is the animation because the <laughs> you like the signal reaction is on the scale. I mean, this is just so the and on space for things, and also so you can count down from six ms attacks into. Um, down the scale essentially so I, I did initially start off the scale at 400 ms and then i realized i didn't have enough space so i expanded it um so 400 ms bashes well they exist like aramusha's got a soft faint 400 bash and um shaman's bash is 400 ms it's gonna be 100 ms faster that is getting into unreactable for absolutely everybody so Blitz, as, even though he's the fastest player around, he, you're not reacting to um, Aramusha's. Nope. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we tested that. I didn't do a single yeah. one. No, it's uh, not happening. It's just not happening, essentially. And, and that's because, I mean, in theory, if you could react to... I think this is also... I think if it was like a big orange flash on the screen overall, I think you might be able to react to them because the very fastest window for this is it's a 400 ms starting off you minus 100 for the to the dodge bash minus 166 for dodging you it's just at the borderline of your single stimulus reaction speed it's about 133 ms window but the animation we we talked about the fade in of the indicator and the animation on the on the um that ring the bell is quite subtle so I think that is also what's keeping it from being being reactable. So if you if you add an extra 66 MS for for the you know the animation fade in, then that puts it all the way over here. So this is well into the region of truly unreactable stuff. So uh yeah, that's that's what it that it comes to with truly unreactable. So basically 400 MS bashes are completely unreactable to pretty much everybody. And we can include the variably timed bashes like Hitakiri's kick, Centurion's punch, um, Warden's shoulder bash in this region because the difference between a charged one and an uncharged one is 300 ms. So it's even less reactable than these bashes in theory. So over this end, and if I was the right, like if we later on, I'll, I'll, I'll like put, put a list together of things that are like fully truly unreactable to everybody is 400 ms bashes 400 ms bash soft feints 400 ms unblockable soft faint light mix-ups like raiders dying tap and variably time bashes and those are going to be unreactable to pretty much everybody whereas um single direction 400 ms lights they're within single stimulus for some people faints they're within single stimulus Fire bashes that are that are just on their own, also within single stimulus range. They 
are probably what we'd call borderline unreactable. And I I think I'm going to try and like push people to try and use this term rather than saying that, because Blitz will say, oh, Final Bash is reactable. I think it's more accurate to call them borderline unreactable because you don't like, because you need to have such good reactions to be able to react to them, basically. Even single stimulus Final Bashes, like, you have, they are something like a Centurion's Kick, even though it's got a big tail, there's no other options you can do from it than just the bash. I can't react to them, and I've tried practicing quite a lot. Just my single stimulus reaction time is just not fast enough, even if I can make... Sorry, this... Um, just as I've tried to put, like, feints here, that's what I call parry, parry flash, um, because it's not really the feint. It's, it's it, the whole animation as well as just the um, the indicator itself. The indicator itself is is technically at this point, but it's a lot more subtle change than uh, it's the whole thing essentially. Um, we've done some tests with Blitz and with other some other very fast players over their ability to re react to Parry Flash with and without, or with react to Parry after the faint window with and we without UI on, and it's about the same. Or slightly worse, but only very slightly worse with the with the UI off. So the actual parry um, flash isn't necessarily the most accurate term to use. Um, yeah, the indicator the indicator does flash, but it's in combination with the animation. So you, so it's it's a it's a combination thing. Um, the last mix-up that I want to mention is Nusha's Traps. So, Nusha's Traps work in a unique way. They are 400ms attacks. And if you were to switch your guard away from them, so 400ms attacks, you've got 100ms of lag compensation. If you were to, to defend against them by moving your guard, that is actually another 100ms. It's putting them into near enough unreactable region because you also it's not just the orange you're also looking at uh if you've got to pay attention to the the actual attack as well so that pushes it again in this direction there's no fade in but it's closer to multiple stimulus so i think if you're reacting if you're trying to move your guard away from when you should traps then it's going to be unreactable for most players except you can avoid having to move your guard away by unlocking or by emoting, or by attacking with a light attack, and that means you don't have to. Your guard goes away instantly without the guard swap, which whoop, moves it back up again. Goes from being four hundred minus one hundred minus another hundred for guard switch, actually all the way back up to here. So we'll add a little bit extra for the sync for the like multiple choice, but actually this is going to be within reactability. If you're reacting to traps with a light attack, you can, you will be able to react to them. So the, this is something I just wanted to mention with terms of Nusha's of reactions. And but then that again, that 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 is applying to, um, you know, most people, but not on console, and not if you're a slow slowpoke like me, because then even even here, these things are going to be on the edge of your reaction speed. Limit essentially. Um, and what else is there? I mean, things like in terms of other mix ups, we've got well, there's telling if it's a heavy or a light, but that's a lot more difficult to point out on a graph where that's going to be because distinguishing between heavies and lights is very much dependent on the animation. If you have a character like Nabushi, where her lights are little pokes and her heavies are big swings, it's going to be a lot easier to distinguish those two animations than if your character like Warmonger, where her lights and heavies are both slashes that kind of start from about the same position. Um, so, yeah, uh, lights and heavies, I guess I could do the. Can I just make that now because I like to.
in Greek. Not in Greek. Greek is probably. This is going to be somewhere like, depending on the, on the animation, either reactable or unreactable, um, and probably kind of in the middle. So again, I'm going to put it on the same kind of thing as a as a, as a five minutes bash without. I guess this is a very variable one. Ready? Sorry. <laughs> well, um, okay, so yeah, I'm gonna put these mix ups away and then switch back to the different uh delays. And then I think if we have some time, we can Nutella maybe because you're if you're able to stream your game, you could I mean, show yep. some good reaction with Blitz. Oh, actually, no, of course, the, bleh, I forgot the last point that I wanted to make. <laughs> okay. Sorry, we can do that after we do that after the last point. All right. So I think I've touched on it a few times, but what is reactable and unreactable? Where if you were to take this and draw a line, which things are reactable, which things are unreactable, where are you going to put that line? You're going to put them, you're going to put it here, because it's unreactable to everybody. This is reactable to everybody. Are you going to put you're going to put it over here where it's unreactable to everybody? What about these things in the middle? What are we going to call faints? Are faints reactable or unreactable? Well, the the answer is it depends. And so the term reactable and unreactable doesn't really apply to faints very much. Like in terms of if you're looking at if you're if you're trying to parry the faint versus if you're blocking if you're just blocking a, a blockable attack, then it doesn't matter that it's reactable. It's not forcing a reaction because you can just block it and you don't have to worry if it's fainted. If you are if you've got a lot of other things going on. If there's a, uh, actually, I guess the best example of this is the storming tap um, mix-up. So I was testing with Blitz before the rework, as using Raiders, um, fainted heavy, the fainted neutral zone, and nothing else, and he was able to parry the neutral zone. If it, after the faint window, every time, pretty much like ninety-nine percent efficient of accuracy, or we think it'll hit once the entire time you're doing it, but. The storming tap mix up if you add that extra thing in then it becomes impossible to parry the heavy on the faint timing because you've got to worry about this other 400 mess light as well and the soft faint has a more subtle animation than regular faints as well if you if you're soft faint to guard break so the whole mix up goes from being in the reactable region to being the unreactable region because you've added more elements onto it and if we go back to looking at what it is uh, you know these delays and and that's essentially adding extra choices to them, pushing the reaction window from single stimulus all the way into unreactable. And the same thing applies to forward dodge bashes when you're looking at things like um, Jan Hu's forward dodge bash or Orochi's forward dodge bash. They can be unreactable because you have more, you're adding an extra element. So even though each individual component is reactable, in total, the mix up is unreactable. And it's the same thing with, I mean, it's essentially the same thing as these variably charged bashes. Each individual, if somebody only does the uncharged warden shoulder bash at you, you're going to dodge it every single time. But when they start mixing it up, it becomes unreactable because you have to make these choices. And if they if they start fainting their bash into a light all the time, that's other things going to get hit by the, by the neutral one a little bit easier, a little bit more as well. Um, yeah, so... I personally don't think the terms unreactable and reactable are really good fit for service anymore. Um, and I would like to suggest people use truly unreactable for these uh, attacks that are on this end, that unreactable to everybody. So chain 400 MS lights, 400 soft feints, 400 bashes, that kind of thing. Some of the um, bash and dodgeball mix up, some of the the bashes and then fully or like universally reactable for things that are universally reactable so 600 ms lights and 700 ms bashes everybody can react to those even the slowest of people even on consoles they're about here that's what that's a long way away from the reaction window and then for things like 
Five hundred most lights and six hundred most bashes. Nusha's traps. Thing four dodge bashes that are single stimulus. Well, I don't think it's accurate to call them reactable either, because a lot of people like myself and people on console they can't react to them either. So I would say these are better called borderline reactable or semi reactable instead of unreactable, and hopefully that would allow people to have better discourse and they won't say oh these attacks are unreactable and then somebody goes oh no this is re it's reactable when really you're talking about an attack that's in the middle here that the term doesn't really work for either either way and um, because it's so much dependent on your individual reaction time and your setups and all the other contexts so either you have to specify this is reactable at the very highest level or use terms like borderline unreactable or semi-reactable and truly unreactable in to distinguish them. And I think, um, oh, whilst I've got Blitz here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna point at you, Blitz. So you, I've seen you mention on the subreddit things, um, oh, this attack is reactable. Well, it's reactable to, to, be, fair, to be fair, I do say, a lot of time I do say at the highest level. Yeah, you do say at the highest level. And, it, and I'm not, isn't, I, this is not a criticism of you really. I'm just, just pointing, I'm just poking at you because you're here. <laughs> but, is is an example of something we we ought to think about, and maybe if you if you call it truly unreactable for things that are truly unreactable, or borderline unreactable for things that are reactable to you but not to most people, um, maybe that might be might be easier to you will avoid um, uh, misunderstandings and and hopefully I mean because a lot of the stuff we do here is to try and improve uh, interaction with people people who are you know, different levels of the game and it helps if we're all talking the same language i think anyway um i've been talking an awful long time would you like to see some i mean are you are, blitz are you, are you would you be up for showing off some of your reaction speed and showing how some of these unreactable sure. things are actually reactable to you sure i'm gonna go use the restroom real quick though you can invite me all right um well natalia's the one doing the streaming i think so natalia do you think you could I just add me or something. Yeah, um, yeah. If you haven't got a minute, yeah, we can do a repeat of the uh, just him reacting to Black Prior things, which is always terrifying. <laughs> so, where would Highlander kick grab mix up go? Okay, that's a good question. So, the kick is 700 ms, but it faints into the grab at, I think, 300 ms before the kick hits. So, it's actually really really unreactable in that is basically right at this end if you were to react to the kick versus the grab you'd have to react to the grab animation like in the last 300 ms of the kick so basically completely unreactable except of course you can just roll away or dodge attack so it makes uh, a mix-up that would be right at this end of the scale and completely unreactable trivialized by both of those being able to be defeated with the same option rolling away or dodge attacking um i think it's just uh, let's let's get up in dojo chat so and, and another one that's similar to that is tiandy's um tiandy's kick into he can he faint it into a soft faint into a dodge and use his undodgeable except that you can back dodge and that takes you out of the range of these side undodgeables, and if you dot, you can block top, and then you just avoid both of them at one time. You can dodge the kick and block the undodgeable light. Um, this is the same thing with Orochi's forward dodge mix up. If you've got a static guard character where you can block in one direction and not have your guard change, like, um, well, like Raider, for example, if you can distinguish the Storm Rush animation from the kick slash undodgeable light animation, which a lot of players can do with practice, then you can just side dodge whenever you see him do the kick or forward dodge light, block top, and then avoid the mix-up completely. So there are ways that you can take these unreactable designs <coughs> and turn them reactable by having one option beat both options. With one move, beat both options for a mix-up. Um, and yeah, Highlander's kit to grab, good question, is is an example of something that would be very, very good offense if it didn't have a fatal flaw that meant 
you can avoid it if you know completely if you know what that floor if you know what that floor is so yeah this is what people say about a, a home having amazing um out of stamina pressure because if he gets you out of stamina you can't roll or dodge tech and his kick mix up is very high damage and very scary you have to make a read um yep just as mentioned of course external guarding that's another way to change a three direction choice into one into one direction or zero direction choice you just put them externally and then you can react on red to block all the light attacks um, even if you're not just blocking them that way. Sometimes you can do the same thing with these bash and bubble mix-ups where you guard one direction and dodge away from them. And then you are going to be blocking the direction of the undodgeables and the direction of the bash. And you dodge away, dodge away from the bash. That becomes a mix-up which does no longer functions because you don't have to react to it anymore, essentially. So finding ways around reacting finding ways to turn a choice reaction into a single reaction to make it easier are probably the two <clears throat> biggest ways in which practice of the game can turn reactions, complex reactions, things unreactable to make them reactable to you. So I know that's not necessarily the most, <laughs> the most helpful thing to say, just practice and learn about the game, um, which is essentially what I've done by saying that but it kind of does does work <laughs> um those will be the biggest things for improving your your ability to rank all right no, don't ready. apologize that is it all right great uh Kenzie bash is 400 ms so that's in the same region as aramusha's bash and um shaman's bash as well but because it has such a slow startup from the heavy you can just light attack them out of it and the fast players can see his heavy startup, light attack, and that will prevent him from using it and also from fainting to parry that because it's it's so far, it's so slow. So that's another another way of getting around the unreactable mix up of the bash by just pressing light attack. Um I guess until you're in you've got oh yeah perfect you've got it already. I will stop streaming to this for you please. Okay, so we're going to see. That's my first time doing this in a while. You're going to see. This is um, what players call Academy, essentially, by you are. Um, Blitz does this quite a lot of time. Just like sits and practices, um, dodging bashes, dodging variably timed bashes. And okay, you, I, you can see that this is, again, similar to. We go back to the sort of the brain point on the thing. It, Oof, Blitz was. Much. When I. Trained, did did a session with you like Ooh, few weeks ago. Blitz was dodging these like perfectly, and I think as we'll, as as he gets into the swing of things, you'll see that he can start to dodge them on reaction much more consistently. And then I started mixing it up with light attacks, and he was still blocking those, um, doing all my tricks. Um, but that's a, that's part of the getting your getting into the right headspace and move moving these multiple choice reactions down into a single choice reaction by only focusing on that. Um, and the more you practice, the better you'll be able to identify a scen the scenario that you're in and turn it into a single choice reaction, essentially. So you can see he, here he's, he's dodging much better than just than random chance. So if you're practiced and you've got very, very fast reactions like Blitz, this kind of um, thing is not too hard for him. And if he's able to punish the bash every time, then you can see as a BP, you'd be very, um, be very behind on health very quickly. If you can't punish the bash, of course, then reacting to it doesn't really make much of a big difference. And this is why Nusha's traps are effective even though if you use them, you can react to them with a light attack because you can't parry them. And if you try and parry, the, the trap will catch you. It goes into being the parries have that 100 ms startup, goes into that being the unreactable region again. So it allows you to throw blockable heavies and get into your chain lights very safely. So 
th that is something else you you have to consider in terms of we talked about reactability today not really overall effectiveness effectiveness is not just about how hard it is to react to something it's also about how safe it is to use that move how um what and how much damage you get off it how much damage you risk taking it so shaman's bash is a 400 ms bash but because you it's very very guard break vulnerable and it has a big startup where you're vulnerable to being interrupted as well it makes it overall not nearly as effective uh, offensively as something like Aramusha's Fornerous Bash Soft Faint because you, I mean, you're, you're much more punishable and um, less safe. So mix up some uh, zones in there with it. And, uh, start, go start going nuts. Try and, try and hit with everything you've got. Lights and four dodge heavies and Faint, well, Bulwark Slash and all that good stuff. I guess we also cross continental, um, the cross Atlantic connection as well. So it might be a little bit harder. So this is something that you you can notice when five hundred bash when it's got a dodge startup makes it a lot closer to a one hundred ms. Uh, a lot. I give it a parry that, or just not do anything on that one. It's up to you, really. I'll parry it. <laughs> so yeah what things that are reactable to blitz and of course we we like even somebody who's got good reactions is not going to be reacting at that speed 100% of the time and sometimes they'll be reacting faster and sometimes they'll be reacting, reacting slower so it's not accurate to say that oh I've got 150 ms reactions just like full stop because there's going to be variance and most players even the top players will say they their reaction speeds vary by 50 milliseconds or you know can be up to 50 seconds variance on them at the best of times um so things end up being a lot more reactable than they might be in theory if you're paying attention to just one thing um that's also why things are much harder to react to in dominion um, you just got a lot more stuff going on. So there's a lot more to think about and things become a lot less reactable. Um, if you, if the pressure's higher as well, like it's harder to, often harder to react to a bash that's going to set you up for a gank. If you know that that bash is going to cost you 70 damage, you'd be really highly focused on that bash. Whereas if you're in a, 1v1 where you've got a health lead landing the being being bashed once will make a really big difference so you'll, you'll be on the lookout for that um, yeah i don't think i've really got anything else left to say I've, I've been talking for a long time um thank you all very much for listening thanks for your patience <laughs> with getting the stream set up um i can see you teller has been like <laughs> finding it already finding <laughs> it frustrating like trying to can't hit this damn guy <laughs> There you see a fire and light there landed on him, like, and that's that's well in the re the realms of reactability for <laughs> Blitz. Fire and lights shouldn't be landing at all in theory, except he's been focusing on the bash so much that he was hit by a light, even though that's well within his reactable range. So you've got that's all. This is all comes back to like focusing and getting into the right headspace. How things that are reactable can become unreactable um and this is how things like you know even neutral shigoki hug and neutral long arm can can land sometimes because sometimes people are um starting up they're, they're just not expecting oh, it, starting up a, their attack to do something else so they get caught by it um yeah i think that's it really for me um i'll i'll save these diagrams and i'll stick them in the in the the, the dojo and you can you know to do what you want with them print them out stick them on your wall and <laughs> i don't know at this point um yeah i'm terrible at saying turning off these things let me uh
Uh, any other thoughts and Nutella Blitz that I haven't covered that you think I should mention? Uh, one thing that makes it a lot harder to like uh, is is conditioning. If like let's say a character like Centurion doesn't have a dodge attack and can't punish bashes, if I bash him six times in a row with VP and he dodges all of them, he'll probably jitter on the next one because he's only focused on the bash at that point. So conditioning somebody is very easy with some characters. Yeah, because it comes down to safety, right? Uh, you mentioned if if an attack is very safe against some character, then you can you can be a lot more you can use it a lot more, and then and then that allows you to condition without. Condition opponent without having as much risk. <laughs> uh, if you make a correct read, say on reaction, baby, every time. That's very important to uh, intimidate your opponents. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, and you should always brag about re your reactions, um, even though it's really more of a, you know, it's just mm -hmm. a complete, you know, random genetics and how young you are. Um, bigger, you know. Reactions of skill, right? Could you feed that? Bad GP, Button bad GP. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for watching. Um, sorry, it wasn't as polished as uh, as we would try to do. I was, was, I didn't manage to finish this diagram with quite enough time to get the stream thing set up um, more nicely. Oh, I'm going to say goodbye to chat because I am terrible at just turning these things off and stopping. Um, uh, thanks for watching. We will do. We'll be back next week. We will have the third qualifiers for the Dominion series in EU. We'll be casting those with um, Freeze and Verbalocity and anybody else who fancies joining. I guess. Um, yeah, that's it. Really. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Um, bye. Take care, lads.